Climate change is now a polarizing issue in American politics. While the environmental movement has long known that scientific evidence is an important part of convincing people and governments to take action, their efforts continue to be thwarted not only by outright denialism, but also by a much more insidious version of climate change denial, pseudo-rational climate skepticism. A campaign of disinformation from seemingly legitimate sources has stymied the climate movement's efforts to educate the general public on climate change, in part because it casts doubt on established climate science. Today, instead of debunking climate change denial, I'm going to explore climate skepticism and why it's such a powerful factor in preventing climate action, even when scientific studies continue to say that human-caused climate change is a reality. In order to understand the power of climate change skepticism, we need to first strip down the conservative climate change strategy to its core. A fair amount of public voices that denounce the evidence of anthropogenic climate change are backed by a number of large conservative think tanks like the Heartland or Cato Institute, who have developed an anti-environmental strategy that seeks to muddy research-based results by claiming that the science is quote-unquote unsettled while also championing a need for more analysis. This tactic works so well because climate deniers don't necessarily have to provide a strong counterargument refuting the growing evidence of human-caused climate change. Instead, all they need to do is plant kernels of doubt in the public's mind, which ultimately blocks a majority consensus needed to create political change. And with the use of official-sounding names like the Cato Institute, these unfounded claims seem even more legitimate. These tactics take a page directly from the tobacco industry's playbook. From the 1950s to the 1970s, tobacco companies did not necessarily provide strong evidence to refute claims made against cigarettes, so much as cast the needed amount of doubt on the research in order to delay policy change. Climate skeptics and the fossil fuels industry are finding success with very similar strategies. Take, for example, the case of ExxonMobil. In 1977, the scientific advisor of Exxon's products research division, James F. Black, gave a presentation to some company managers outlining the blunt truth that our use of fossil fuels was contributing to warmer global temperatures. In the subsequent 10 years, Exxon embarked on an intensive in-house scientific investigation that researched the validity of this claim. The company even went so far as to outfit one of their super tankers, the SO Atlantic, with equipment to test carbon dioxide levels in the ocean. Exxon's research was extensive, and the result of their computer models and tests confirmed what many other studies were already saying. Global temperatures would rise as a result of increased carbon dioxide release. All of this was summed up in a 43-page memo circulated within the company, which was concerned with the CO2 greenhouse effect, which is receiving increased attention in both the scientific and popular press as an emerging environmental issue. In short, ExxonMobil knew that the burning of fossil fuels contributes to a changing climate in 1977. Despite this knowledge, by the 1990s, ExxonMobil had adopted a policy of climate change skepticism and disinformation. Among other methods, the company published a number of ads that cast doubt on the established studies of the time and praised the importance of embracing skepticism. Exxon also donated over $675,000 to the Heartland Institute from 1997 to 2006. This think tank spread scientific disinformation in many forms, one of which included mailing 100,000 free copies of a book to people on Earth Day that claimed that climate science has been corrupted. Skepticism is a powerful tool in an era where mainstream news is dominated by concerns of profitability and controversy rather than evidence-based stories. By constantly repeating that there's still uncertainty or a need for continued debate, climate change skeptics continue to generate doubt about climate science without needing to substantiate any of their claims. This unfortunately means that today the battle for climate action is not over facts, but instead over whose voice is the loudest. So climate change disinformation and skepticism can only continue to exist if we give it a microphone. Conducting debates on how to deal with human-caused climate change is fine. But in order to move forward with strong climate policy, we need to make clear that this form of skepticism is just another tool to delay essential climate action. 
This video is made possible in part by the wonderful people who support me on Patreon. If you're interested in helping me grow this channel, head on over to Patreon and pledge a small amount of money for every video I release. In return, I'll send you gifts like a handwritten thank you note or an Our Changing Climate sticker. As always, if you like what you just saw, share it around and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next Friday.